time and money and like energy, people don't have enough of those three things to do anything but try to attain more of those three things. They, they have to go to work and stuff. So, so, you know, like getting involved in a cause is just time and energy that people don't have. And then, and then another thing too is, you know, I do think like there's a stigma for, for getting involved, you know, like people just don't want to get involved because they think that you know, it's just lame or it's not going to do any good. I think that it is people are frustrated and don't, and, and don't think that they'll have any impact if they do get involved. And I also think it's people not knowing that it could be better. Um, it's a lack of hope. It's a lack of vision. Um, and that's where leadership comes in. Yeah, I think that probably bigger, a bigger uh, impact would be if they could visualize themselves. I think a lot of people just don't see themselves in that role, and so they have to—they have to see that to actually make it happen. And so that—that that would be key to me. Would be that anyone could do it if they actually see themselves doing it. Take a step back and go, that person who's advocating—that could be me. I could be doing the same thing. And then they just kind of would work on developing the skills to and the knowledge to be able to do it. I think that the. The feeling out there for most people is that it's too big for them and it's too inaccessible. And if they really understood how open the process is and how easily they can access their representatives or their senator, um, they would feel more empowered to get involved and they might be more likely to vote. And I think that would really improve um, the percentage of people that actually get out there and vote too when they, when they realize what happens to their vote after they cast it. The world is run by those who show up and that is so true. Um, sometimes it's really a calculation of how important was that issue because there's only two people in the room. Well what if you come and somebody else comes and you're right to fight four friends and there's 400 people in the room. Those sort of things speak huge impacts to uh, or huge volumes to decisions when you see that many people take the time to show up because it does take it does take time to show up. It's a sacrifice. Changing policy takes time, but I don't know. Changing the world's hard work, and it's worth the effort. I um, have kind of always felt of myself as a change agent, mm -hmm. and maybe I'm a good one because I don't get frustrated in the fact that it's not happening tomorrow and it's mm -hmm. not happening now. But that doesn't mean that you should stop working on it, um, or that it is important. So definitely, uh, you have to have that understanding that what you do now may actually have some impact 10 years later mm -hmm. because you were doing it now and had you not done it that change might not have happened and, and some of the best leaders are those that are quick to identify this is a success even though we didn't get you know and, and they point out to you that we have accomplished something we still have this to work on and, uh, and that is so true for the, the political process and, and the decision making that goes on because you just can't have it all. That grassroots involvement, I think that's where people really need to be focused and that's where you get to the implementation. Because from the point that a policy is made and a resource is allocated from those that are generally elected to do that, there's a whole variety of things that the folks who work for government, be it county, city, or state, that they get to, they have decisions they make to implement those policies. And that's where when citizens are involved at the implementation level, when they're involved in either their neighborhood council meetings or they're just their general neighborhood meetings or the different organizations, so that the staff, city staff, goes to them and says, this is what this could look like. Is this meet your vision? It's not that the park's going to be built. The elected official already decided that. But it's where the grassroots involvement is now, what should that park look like? What amenities should it include? Is it more for toddlers and young kids? Is it more for seniors? Or is it more as maybe a little pocket park for people to rest when they're in the middle of a busy urban center, just a place maybe to have a little greenery and flowers in their life? So I can't emphasize enough that it isn't just advocating at the political level with policy makers. It's also getting involved with staff during the implementation phase. And I think that's a lot of where citizens don't know how to get involved in the implementation phase. People have to figure out for themselves like how much capacity they have, right? Um, they have to figure out, like, can I drive all the way down to Olympia for this hearing on Friday at 1130? Most people work 9 to 5, and they can't, you know, 
and so they have to like write a letter and that's the only way they can be heard you know um, or they can call in or now they're texting and emailing but like I think the more intention you put into things the more you'll get out of it you know so if I see something that just like moves me in my heart and in my spirit so strongly I'll go down physically in person and I'll just like cut whatever's happening in my life and prioritize like speaking and educating legislators about why this is so important to make a change around you know but I also come back to the community and do education and let people know like did you guys hear about so and so and so you know proposition whatever 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 you know like they're thinking about doing this and and I think a lot of that has to do with being linked into like-minded people just you know talking to their neighbors um, about that that is that particular issue and becoming educated on you know what they're concerned with um, and um, you know bringing it up and having conversations about it and having conversations about what you know what that person cares about um, and and then I, I think the the sole most important thing that somebody could do to uh, is write a letter you know to their representative um, about those concerns because they're there to represent um, you know our our issues and call them and um, just kind of staying in contact um, if there were a couple of people from um, you know different especially minority communities that did that on that were brought up okay this issue I'm really concerned about it and sent the letter um, you know that 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 would um, that would do a, a big uh, service to probably their neighbors and, and uh, the community as a whole by getting uh, their perspective to our representatives. Our events, community events can bring people together and art can get people talking and can get people interested in one another. Um, but I mean you don't need to be an artist or appreciate art to like to respect and get to know your neighbor and try to create community. But it can help. To think that activism or community organizing could be done out separate of the rest of the world is is a different frame of like very insular organizing and it's not the type of organizing that really changes systematic structures and changes like real core issues. I see one of the biggest challenges and the biggest problems um, to being able to uh, attend is being aware of having that um, opportunity to kind of know where things are and so more of that information from uh, that invite people out um, so w the community feels invited to participate and not just that they're showing up to um, uh, somebody else's um, meeting but more of that invitation and that constant reminder that this is um, this is our city, this is our district, this is our community um, so we feel ownership of that. So the trick is trying to find better ways for out outreach than what's ever there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, the public are always welcome at our meetings, that sort of thing. But um, for some other people discuss, there's different groups that are harder to reach. Uh, and in my experience over you know 20 some odd years of community participation, the way that you get somebody involved is to invite them and hold their hand and get them there and walk them through the first steps. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get through two cycles of voting in four community meetings, then they're going to be hooked or they're not going to be hooked. But people don't, I don't think any of us understand uh, the power we have in just showing up and saying what we mean until we've done it and we've seen a positive result from it. Once you know you have that power, well then it's a whole different world.